Hello everyone and welcome back to the A-Side. I am your host, Riley, and for the first time in over five years, Fall Out Boy has released a new album. Their eighth album, So Much for Stardust, was highly anticipated after such a long silence from the band and a very rocky post-hiatus track record. So how did it turn out? Well, before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's free. You can always unsubscribe later if you want. So Fall Out Boy are finally back after such a long time. Uh, in my opinion, they released some undisputed classics in the 2000s. However, after their hiatus, they returned to very polarized opinions. Post-hiatus Fall Out Boy were all about trend chasing as they entered into their pop era with albums like Save Rock and Roll and American Beauty, American Psycho. Uh, while both albums saw major success and big hits, uh, many fans felt betrayed with the band that they've loved for so long. Personally, I hate almost every second of Save Rock and Roll, but I think American Beauty, American Psycho has a really stellar back half um, with some hidden gems on it, Fourth of July, Irresistible, Twin Skeletons. Uh, this being said, in 2018, Fallout Boy went too far with Mania. Mania was experimental and all over the place as Fall Out Boy tried so many new sounds. I mean, it mainly followed the trap influence as many other bands did at that time, 2018, 2019. Uh, but they also dipped their toes into EDM and a little bit of like reggae almost and other sounds. Um, it didn't pay off as the album was universally panned and unsuccessful. But my hot take is that I adore Mania. It's like a 9 plus, 10, uh, 9 plus out of 10 for me. It was easily my fo uh, po favorite post hiatus follow up by album. And, and spoiler alert, it still is. Uh, I remember the day it came out, I was so upset because I couldn't get to the store and buy the CD. Um, then after that, Fall Out Boy dropped that little Homecoming EP, The Lake Effect Kid, which is also really good. Uh, and then it was Radio Silence. The gap between Mania and a potential new album became longer than the one between Foley and Save Rock and Roll when the band literally broke up. Many, including myself, were very curious about what a new Fall Out Boy album would sound like. If there would even be a new Fall Out Boy album. Was it possible that Mania did them in and turned them into a legacy act? However, in January of this year, the time came and Fall Out Boy came back with their single, Love From The Other Side, and the announcement of their new album, So Much For... The hype myself and many felt for this record was insane, especially after Love From The Other Side dropped as the lead single. The song sounded just like the golden age of Fall Out Boy. It was amazing to hear the boys embrace rock and play as a group again, going back to their roots, giving the fans what they want, and being so damn good at it. Even the title of the album felt so old, Fall Out Boy. So much for Stardust. Feels like it's in the same vein as Infinity on High or Under the Quirk Tree. Uh, old Fall Out Boy was back! However, we got debated. That's not at all what we got. My hype really started to die down after the second single, Heartbreak Feels So Good, which was just so poppy. Uh, then Patrick started to go around saying, we aren't going back to 2007, guys. I felt like Job. First the Lord giveth, and then he taketh away. Why would they put out a lead single that tells us one thing, then have the album be so much another? Why not go back to 2007? That's what the fans want. That's when the band was good. It's no coincidence that a large amount of people said Love From The Other Side was the best post-hiatus Fall Out Boy song. I mentioned this in my Paramore review, but Fall Out Boy doesn't seem to understand that you can make a rock album without reliving the glory days. You can keep your sound fresh without selling out and trend chasing. For all intents and purposes, So Much For Stardust is a rock album. Uh, this is a guitar album, you can actually make out all the instruments. But somehow, it doesn't feel like a Fall Out Boy rock album. It feels very post-hiatus Fall Out Boy. In a lot of the ideas, writing, structure, and attitude, the record, I think, is in the similar ilk to Save Rock and Roll and American Beauty. I've said all of this, but I still don't think it's a bad album. It's just a wildly inconsistent and disappointing album. I mean, considering what the lead single promised. So Much for Stardust is kind of like a mid-sandwich. It opens with an incredible stretch of songs, and it ends with an incredible stretch of songs. However, in the middle section, the album, uh, the tracks range from boring and forgettable to bad and eye-roll worthy. The only thing that remains consistent, however, is Patrick. Man has an incredible voice. It's filled with passion and beauty. I love Patrick. He's such a good vocalist. The record opens with the aforementioned love from the other side. 
It's an incredible opening track as it really kicks down the gates. The song is very reminiscent of an Infinity on High, but it's so much more than a rehash. It feels like the next logical step from the sound of that album. It's far more grandiose and cinematic. Love from the other side greets us with spell-binding pianos that build the tension, only to slap you across the face with punchy guitars and bombastic strings. The strings here really make this song feel huge. It's got such a grand scope. I feel like for the first time in a long time, Fall Out Boy really show their musicianship. These guys are just so talented. The amount of maturity and nuance in Joe's guitar here is insane. Patrick is always a phenomenal vocalist, but he really shines here. Uh, his delivery, along with the excellently crafted melodies, creates such intensity. An intensity that is cranked up even more when the vocals layer on the buildup. Pete creates a lot of really awesome imagery with his lyricism here. We were a hammer to the statue of David. The city always hangs on me loose like a kid playing pretend in his father's suit. Every lover's got a little dagger in their hand. But there's no way off the hamster wheel in this rat race. While well, all being very poetic, um, conjure up very vivid images in my mind. Love from the other side is the band firing on all cylinders and executing their ideas flawlessly. It's incredible. While the whole album may not follow suit, so much for Stardust certainly starts off with a bang. And the follow-up song, Heartbreak Feels So Good, has really grown on me. When it was released as the second single, I wrote it off as poppy garbage with its obnoxious millennial whooping and electric beat. The millennial whooping after the chorus is still really obnoxious, but everything else holds up. The chorus in the song is excellent. I love the transition from It's heartbreak to We can dance the tears away. It's also definitely the catchiest song on the record. I really like the vocal layering on the roads as a ramp part. Um, I also like the message of this song, just about taking heartbreak and stride and continuing to live your life. Hold Me Like a Grudge is a thumping beat that I love. Pete's bass here is cool, uh, even if it is a little reminiscent of another uh, one bites the dust and Panic Station. Still pretty cool. Uh, the song also has some really neat vocal layering. At first, I thought Patrick's Michael Jackson esque ad libs, he sounded like the ah, mm, mm, ah uh, were silly and awkward, but now I find them kind of charming. Uh, the chorus on this song is really where it shines. There is a singular piano note played on the downbeat, and it's very deep in the mix. Uh, it's like the peace and the clarity trying to pierce its way out of the storm. I'm loving the guitar lick that follows the chorus, too. Um, I like to think the song is about the fans who are critical about their pop sound. They still continually come back to listen despite knowing the direction they're going in, holding on to the band uh, still, but being angry with them, holding them like a grudge. Um, it's almost like a toxic relationship between the two. Um, the world is always spinning and I can't keep up is a great lyric that really resonates with me. Uh, but for the theme of the song, it pertains to new trends popping up all the time and it being impossible to chase those trends in success and stay relevant while also trying to listen to what everyone in your fan base wants. Uh, the line about getting bolder and less pissed because we didn't make it on the year-end list was all but confirmation to me that this is what the song was about. It's interesting lyrically, but it's the music of the song that really keeps me coming back. And now to that little middle section where I'm like, oh my god, just get it over with. I mean, there are two different spoken interludes. The first one features the world-famous actor Ethan Hawke, who you may know from recent projects Moon Knight and The Black Phone. Um, it's called The Pink Seashell. And what he has to say is actually pretty profound. He talks about how when his father was dying, he came to the conclusion that life was inherently empty and meaningless, and that he had to find his own joy and embrace what brought him happiness in this meaningless life. Um, but then after two songs, there's another interlude with, uh, Pete Wentz speaking called Baby Annihilation. There doesn't need to be two, especially so close to each other on the track list. I know they were trying to go for, like, a throwback to Folia Dew and Cork Tree with a, oh, look, Pete Wentz is doing his pretentious spoken word thing. But he just sounds so disinterested in it, he does not care in the slightest about it. I don't like having Iowa. It tries to go for a serious, menacing thing, but it doesn't work for me. If anything, Fall Out Boy is trying to make their own uh, in the air tonight. From the hazy nighttime vibe to the atmospheric electronic percussion, it's just ripped right out of Phil Collins' book. It even has a great value version of the famous in the air tonight drum solo. I guarantee you know that I pointed that out. You can't unhear it. Uh, the melodies are very uninspired to me. 6 a.m. Mulholland Drive, Moonlight Sonata at Night is not an interesting or exciting melody in the slightest. The song itself is a very slow tempo and is way too long. It feels like it meanders through its runtime. 
Pete's lyrics here mean nothing to me either. I feel so a star is born. Just makes me roll my eyes. What are you even trying to say? This man has written amazing, beautiful lyrics like Life's Just a Paste of Undeath, Only Less Diligent, and cutting lyrics like Douse Yourself and Cheap Perfume with So Fitting of the Way You Are. Yet he still settles for uninteresting filler lyrics on his big comeback album. Uh, fake Out and uh, so good right now. Both suffer the same problem. They're both way too cutesy sounding, reminding me of what I disliked about a lot of Save Rock and Roll. Fake Out has actually grown on me, despite this, uh, like, Patrick's falsetto and, like, the sweeping, like, swirling melodies are kind of cool. Uh, but so good right now is, like, movie trailer core to the max. I expect to hear this summer follow the wacky adventures of, insert wacky kids character here. It's so cheesy and forced happy in tone. Let's clap along. Do 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 do. Be it's it's like it's like it's on a reality TV show. The woes don't help it in the slightest. I I hate it. I am my own muse. Pushes the grandiose scope and orchestration of the first song too far. The song is extremely overblown. There's such thing as too much, and I am my own muse. Is it? Um, its Bond-esque strings are overly bombastic, and the brass are just so on the nose. Uh, it leaves no room for subtlety. The song is extremely repetitive, too. It feels like I'm being beat over the head with, Got to throw this you away, we got to throw this you away. By the time I'm done, I'm like, oh my god. Flu game really gets on my nerves as well. The na 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 is just the worst. The line about catching your ear somewhere between Mike Tyson and Leno is actually one of the dumbest things Pete Wentz has ever written. It's up there with my heart is like a stallion or tonight I'm high as a running jet. Luckily, the last leg of the album picks back up and ends spectacularly, in my opinion. Uh, the Kintsugi Kid, 10 Years, has a really whimsical chorus I have a lot of fun with. The song is about pulling yourself together after emotional and mental health problems. It's about getting better. I like that. Um, penultimate track, What a Time to Be Alive, is my favorite track on So Much for Stardust. It's like Foley a dude's less nuanced younger brother. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Foley has this huge soul influence. But it's fused with pop punk, alternative rock, and art pop to make for something so new and interesting. What a Time to Be Alive is just straight up Savvy Souls, and it's fucking awesome. The song's just a blast of joy. The soaring soul really brings out the best in Patrick's vocals. He's just having so much fun. I love the sound of the song with its strings and wind instruments. I'm having so much fun. I love the topic of the song, too, uh, and I feel like it hasn't been, ha hasn't been tackled. COVID and quarantine really changed everyone's lives and impacted us all in so many ways. I feel like a lot of art and music has tackled how horrible the isolation was. Like Bo Burnham. However, What a Time to Be Alive talks about how blissful and amazing it was when everything went back to normal. How happy we were when we could just all see each other again. When we could love each other and hold each other again. He says, I just need someone to hold me. After coming out of the isolation, he wants to feel the thrill of new love again. Even if things still suck, even if the world is falling apart, even if the ship is sinking, we can see the world again, we can see each other again, we can love and live as humans, we can go outside and watch the sunset, and that's beautiful. That makes life worth it. What a beautiful sentiment to this song, and it puts a huge smile on my face whenever I hear it. That and the soul sound with how positive and bright it is and how Patrick just really fits on it. It is an amazing song. Easily my favorite on the record. Closing song so much for Stardust is the darkest song on the record and among my favorites. Sonically, it comes in with those Muse-esque pianos foretelling the apocalypse. The lyrics here are dour. Um, it's all about giving up on your dreams and wishes as any hope inside of you dies saying... So much for Stardust, meaning so much for the wishes I made. And that's a really interesting poetic way to say that. It's about the despair of being stuck in the same situation, stuck in an endless loop. Pete compares it to being com uh, to being stuck in permafrost. Um, Andy's drumming on the song is especially incredible, easily his best performance on the record. Uh, I love how this song brings the record full circle by bringing back lines from the opening track. What a great way to end the album, though. Uh, leaving you on such a bleak and hopeless note leaves you with a lot to think about and, and leaves you to contemplate on your own dreams, place, and future.
And that's so much for Stardust, Fall Out Boy's newest album. It has some incredibly high highs. And most of the lows aren't anything extremely offensive, just rather dull and forgettable. Uh, the songs I love, I will come back to for years to come. Uh, but most of the middle section I probably won't ever think about again. I'm feeling like a 6 plus to a 7 minus out of 10. What did you think of So Much for Stardust? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.